Hi everyone and welcome back to my property. Before I get into the meat of uh, today's video, I just wanted to give you an idea of what I have on some of the land. Um, I have several what I call wild open acres and in the middle of summer uh, they're just uh, covered with these daisies and some other flowers, but mainly the daisies. And also uh, in midsummer we had a visitor that I captured on uh, camera and um, I've seen the deer a number of times um, and even into the fall and into the early winter uh, with the tracks in the snow as well. But you can see the deer there um, climbing through some of the cuts that we put in and also a short video here. It's really bad, it's a little shaky. I was sitting in my truck and uh, trying to zoom in with my uh, cell phone. So it's not the greatest video, but you can see the deer climbing out and into the next uh, field. On with today's work. I really needed to get a gravel base in place for a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, for the sawmill, and second, for the shed that I'm planning to build. The shed's going to be 10 by 16, and you can see the pad that I laid out uh, in behind the pickup truck. So what I've done is uh, I purchased one of those systems that you can lay in the back of your pickup truck. It has a crank handle, the load of gravel gets dumped in the back of your pickup, and then you bring it to site and uh, crank it out of the back into the location where you want it. Yeah, gravel pit. I thought you might enjoy this. I'm fortunate that I live about two miles down the road from a quarry and um, obviously you drive in down into the quarry to get your uh, get your stone if you go to pick it up yourself and they were nice enough uh, to let me film when I hit that hit it down in the quarry that day and um, yeah I just find these types of things really interesting and instructive in terms of how these various uh, systems operate. It's still pretty cool and this pile right here is what I'm here to get this is called the uh, two inch with fines in it and uh, I just roll right up over here right over there they've got a, a crushing operation going on pretty cool stuff I just roll over here and wait for the big guy to come along and there he is there that long and narrow gravel pad is going to be for the wood mill the sawmill that's about 19 feet long, and with the extension, that'll sit nicely on there. The sawmill will sit nicely on there. So it'll be an easy process of transitioning the, transitioning the logs over to the uh, saw deck. And then this larger one that you see here behind the pickup truck right now is a pad for a shed that'll be about, uh, won't be about, it'll be 10 feet by 16 feet, and it will allow me to lock up my equipment, store some of the uh, timber that I'm cutting, and just add some security to the property. With the pad in place, I brought over my sawmill and set it up. It came together quite nicely, uh, very stable, easy to get level. But before I get going on uh, the shed, You've heard me complain or comment a number of times how hot it was in the middle of the summer. I mean, we, we were stinking hot in July and August this year. So what I decided to do was build a temporary shelter for the sawmill using an old uh, portable garage uh, frame that I had sitting around. I have to apologize because I've lost some video and some photos that I took when I built the base for the shed, the 10 by 16 shed. You can see that I'm working off of the base, which is the first flat working surface that I have at the property and uh, represents a nice uh, milestone and uh, really useful obviously when you're starting to, uh, to cut wood and uh, put something together. The wood you see on the deck is not wood that I milled at the property. I had my saw set up for a while at my house and obviously I ran several test logs and used it as an opportunity to essentially learn how to use my mill before I brought it over to this property. And so I was able to mill up a number of 4x4s that I'm going to use to build the shed as well as a bunch of 1x2 and 1x1 strips that I used for creating the structure, the shelter 
for the sawmill that I'm building right now. What I'm doing is really quite simple. I'm just taking these one by two pieces of wood that I milled and I'm using those as purloins on this uh, old garage frame, you know, this portable garage frame that we can all buy at Walmart or other box stores in Canada and the US. And um, then taking what I believe is some tarp that I bought at Ikea years ago, not exactly sure what the purpose was for. Uh, but again, taking this uh, blue tarp and then screwing that into the purloins, which I secured, drilled into um, the, uh, the tube frame uh, for the garage structure. And um, it, it, you'll see it turns out quite well. It's very lightweight. It's a little flimsy. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not expecting it to last very long. And um, in, you know, a future video, you can see how I added some additional purloins to strengthen up the roof so it actually carries snow or carries and holds snow long enough uh, until I can get there and remove it. But um, you know the shelter is really important. It uh, gives me a little bit of shade and even a place to uh, eat my lunch uh, as I started to mill up the wood. Here's what it looked like when I finished slapping it all together. You can see through the tarp the one by two purloins that run the length of the, the roof surface. And uh, again, very simple, very easy to throw together. And what you see here in this final photo is what it looks like assembled over the sawmill. Now what I did was dragged it a little bit further down the sawmill so that the uh, actual saw head is covered and at least half of the track is also covered. Thanks for watching the video. Please hit the like button and subscribe. I'm going to have more exciting videos coming out soon. Thanks again.